This is Twit. I guess this is a really a bad conversation because I don't normally like to pick up topics where there's no answer. But lately, there have been a lot of those, and this is another one. I don't, you know, I'm against, for instance, a federal ban on TikTok. I think it's completely reasonable for the Department of Defense to say no, it can't be on your phone. I think it's completely reasonable for sure. Wells Fargo to say it can't be on your phone. And I think I took it off my phone after last week. I think any individual could quite reasonably say, I'm not going to have TikTok on my phone. I'm not going to have Facebook on my phone. I don't have either. Uh, but that I don't think the government should step in and ban it, TikTok or Facebook. I, don't, I think that yeah. that's not the right answer either. Or put it thumb on the scale of who acquires it or, or get a... Get mm -hmm. some kind of a kickback from the acquisition. That's the other thing that makes well, no that's sense just to me. Appalling. I the mean, Treasury just... supposed to get a the highest bidder is going to write a check to the Treasury to, you know, for the permission to acquire TikTok. That's it's that's... it's <laughs> so contrary to our American values that it's it, you can't. It's almost hard to know what to say. It's yeah. it's it's like what? It's uh... and honestly, that whole situation kind of broke my heart too because I've been a fan of what Microsoft has been doing for the past couple of years, especially post Nadella and the way he's reshaped Me the company. Too. But yeah, the it I certainly don't think much of the fact that they were able to work with the Trump administration to do this, to just basically take away this company or steal this company away from its owner. I don't feel good about that. There's an old all. adage, if you, if you sleep with dogs, you'll wake up with fleas. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is <laughs> what's really corrupting about a corrupt government is that everybody who operates within that government becomes corrupted as well because it's the only way you sure. can survive. And I, it breaks my heart to see Tim Cook go to the White House and sit there grimacing uh, next to <laughs> Donald Trump, but it's his job. He has to do it, and he's going to wake up with fleas. And mm -hmm. Microsoft, too, and it does. It, it tars every single company in this country because they understand his power is so great and this is why you don't want an autocratic government. It's why authoritarian governments necessarily fail, why innovation doesn't work, why the American experiment is so important, because we very intentionally, from the very beginning of this country, said we don't want an autocrat, we don't want a king, because that corrupts the whole operation. The rule of law has to be paramount. And I've seen it every, you know, one of the things I always gather from my travels as I wander around is when I, I remember going to Cairo and you, and I'm talking to people and you really get the sense that there's a complete loss of faith in government because they know if you can, if you're a, a, a family member of somebody, of a minister, or you can bribe them, you're going to get your way. Otherwise you're not. And that to completely demoralizes everybody. Everybody just goes, well, screw it, throws up mm -hmm. their hand. And it, it, you get a failed country, and that's exactly what happened in Egypt. You get a failed country. And I don't want us to go down that path. That is a very yeah. bad path. And uh, so, yeah, yeah, you're seeing, that's when you said right there with Microsoft is exactly the consequence. Right. I mm -hmm. was shocked when I read Microsoft's press release or blog post about the conversations with Trump. And they specifically said that they're going to make a deal that's good for the U.S. Treasury, which basically means they're essentially reinforcing it's Trump's called ridiculous... It's back sheesh. Yeah. It's bribery. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the deal should be based on what's good for the country, perhaps, but not what's good for the Treasury. And I think, and it's kind of, this is the other problem is it muddies everything. You, I mean, you could make, it's, it's reasonable to have this policy debate over should a Chinese company be allowed to have a social network in the United States or is that risky? You know, I think if, if Facebook were, if Mark Zuckerberg were Chinese, there'd be a very different conversation. We would be probably actively, everybody would say, take down Facebook. We gotta, I would understand that. But uh, I would, I'm just making the point that I think he's as bad as anybody and he's American. Mm -hmm. You know, and, I yep. wonder, though, the fact that TikTok is a playground for millions and millions of young people, and not just teenagers, 20-something, uh, voting age young people, whether or not that's going to backfire on Trump if he actually does take it down or, or somehow muzzle it between now and the election. It seems to me people would be really angry if you took away their TikTok. Well, and this is what breaks my heart, because I see such good creativity. And you mm -hmm. see people like Sarah Cooper, who is a comedian mm -hmm. who couldn't work because of COVID, there's no clubs she can perform in, came up with a new way of performing 
Yeah, she could have probably done it on Instagram or Twitter. In fact, you know, she has a presence on both. But TikTok was just somehow magically suited to her, and she mm -hmm. became very famous because of TikTok. Or Lil Nas X and Old Town Road, which became the number one hit of 2019, thanks to TikTok. There's a it's a place for creativity, and I hate to I hate to lose that. I'm sure right. we'd mm -hmm. find an alternative, but I just it, that seems like a mean thing to do. I don't know. Do you think it's going to happen, yeah. though? It seems so unlikely to me that it's actually going <clears> to <throat> any of the TikTok stuff. I don't is think gonna there's going to be a shutdown. Yeah. I can't imagine there would actually be a shutdown. It seems like the, the possibility is that either Microsoft or somebody will end up buying those assets, which, again, is a wild thing. And I, I'm sure the parent company, was it ByteDance? I'm sure yeah. they're going to be out for blood. Well, they're going to sue. In fact, Larry, you had yeah. a piece in Forbes. <clears throat> they announced that uh, next week, of course, they've been saying this all along, we're going to sue. Mm -hmm. um, that means it now is no longer in the hands of the executive. It's in the hands of the judicial branch. The courts will decide. Right. Uh, and I guess there is a question about the legality of the executive order. Can, right. can the chief executive unilaterally say, yeah, we're going to... There's some evidence. There's some uh, evidence that he can. Osifius, the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States, seems to have that ability. They can turn down mergers. They can say, uh, "We and we kind of did it with Huawei, right?" So there's precedent for this. Mm -hmm. So uh, it'd be very interesting what the court would say. What is TikTok's claim? What are they? What's their defense? Well, the defense is that they've been trying to negotiate with the Trump administration for over a year. And they're not getting anywhere and that they don't feel that Trump is actually trying to resolve this problem. And the other defense is that Trump is interfering. I mean, even as they attempt to sell themselves to a U.S. company, you know, they're basically doing what Trump asked him to do. And he's still mm -hmm. interfering. Apparently, he wants to give it to Larry Ellison, to give it to Oracle. Yeah, that's the of new one. Because and Larry Ellison held a fundraiser for him. Exactly. I mean, that's yep. just that's insane that we would make much such important policy decisions based on who wants to you know grease the skids for donald trump it, and it's, i, I it's, don't think they're not the ones who need to defend themselves really because nothing trump has said has been proven like these them being a chinese-owned company that's a security risk they still need to prove that before they can start enacting this and the trump administration has not do they need to prove it I mean, it does. Trump yeah, I guess executive anything? orders. He doesn't have to. But I'm sure mm -hmm. ByteDance could come back and be like, well, we didn't do anything like you're saying we're doing these things, but we're not. Well, it's so, kind of the same with yeah. Huawei. It's <laughs> it's yeah. uh, the presumption that if uh, President Xi of China said to ByteDance or Huawei uh, said to ByteDance, hey, I want every mm -hmm. bit of information. You know, By ByteDance says, no, no, we keep all the TikTok, American TikTok content in America. We back it up at Singapore. It never hits the Chinese shores. But we know that it's a Chinese company sure. and the Chinese government can go to them. <clears throat> By the way, same as American company can go to Facebook. American government can go to Facebook and say, we want to see uh, all that data. And by the way, don't, don't, don't mention anything about this. This is uh, so, just between us two. So where do we draw the line? I mean, iPhones are manufactured in China. Yeah, they're, they're, they're designed in Cupertino. But almost every piece of electronics that we have in our home comes from China. And so do we do we extend this to start extending this to yeah. hardware well, makers? I'm trying well? to think about how what's the reasonable we can look at a piece of hardware and know what it does. We can know if it's dangerous. Can't we? Well you don't know what's inside this sure. phone. You don't know what's inside yeah, the phone. No, no, we can. Well, we can take take it apart, look at well, everything. Somebody in it. can take it apart. Yeah, maybe yeah. I can. Uh, the problem with Huawei, as I understand it, is that it's software driven in many cases. And so you can't say with any predictiveness how, what a piece of Huawei gear will always do because the software can be changed and it will have some other behavior. So you can't vet a Huawei 5G switch. But you could look at a phone and vet it. You could say, no, this phone does not have... The, as long as Apple controls the software, right. this phone will not have the ability to do anything right. nefarious. Right. I think that's the case. Yeah, and I think that there was some concern about Huawei's you know the the i'm going to sound very stupid now which is probably accurate but uh, it, like what the way that huawei was leveraging algorithms in its software for the 5g kits right like that that's the idea right like they could, they could basically change yeah, some it's, fundamental it's software, way that the software works it's a software defined to, switch 
So right. the, the software that you load on that switch completely defines the behavior, whether it routes through China, for instance. So right. that's the problem. You can't vet a piece of Huawei gear and say that will never misbehave because the Chinese, a Chinese company controls it 100%. <clears throat> right. And so that's a reasonable thing to say, yeah, we're not going to use Huawei switches. Now, Huawei also makes phones. And I don't, I think you could probably say, well, how is a Huawei phone worse than an Apple phone? I guess because Huawei does the software. Um, I don't know. I, I think, mm -hmm. I think that's the point is that in theory, anyway, hardware can be vetted. Software, mm -hmm. it depends. Can be vetted in the country where it's being right. built. Yeah. Right. You can't yeah. prevent, you cannot prevent a Huawei switch from loading malicious software. You just can't. I also, I, I think there is, there could be arguments made for like essential core pieces of hardware and technology and switches. There's a lot of stuff happening there. There's a lot of data going through yeah. there and a lot of personal data. That's different than just like yeah. a, a single phone. TikTok you know? seeing my location, which it can't, by the way, on the iPhone, mm -hmm. uh, but if it could, is not nearly the, the dangerous thing that a, a, a guy who controls the 5G switches in, the, in a major American city, that guy <laughs> controls infrastructure that is vital. Yeah. Yeah, that's very different. So I, I don't have a problem with the Huawei ban. I, don't, I think it was capriciously uh, implemented and hurts Huawei in ways it probably shouldn't, and it's going to backfire. But <clears throat> uh, I think it was a reasonable thing. And most, and by the way, most Western governments did decide not to use Huawei gear in their 5G switches, uh, 5, 5G networks. But I don't know about the TikTok ban. I, think, I don't mm -hmm. think a government should ban a social network. Well, I don't know. Well, and really, I'd love to I see think the, the government only... ban Facebook. The Chinese do. They <laughs> yeah. ban. They ban all sorts. They of do. Them. But wait, that's what the whole yeah. point. We shouldn't be like the Chinese. Tim Wu wrote a yep. uh, opinion yep. piece in the, and I normally respect the guy in the New York Times saying, "Hey, China does it to us. We should do it back." No, we should stand up for a free and open internet because that's what we do. That's how you promote our values. You don't. And, and the question is, do you take you take TikTok at its word that their servers are based in the U.S. in Singapore and not in mainland China? that their policies are determined by their policy shops here in the United States and not in mainland China. I mean, if you listen to them, and I've, I've spoken extensively with their executives, they will argue that they are operating not as a U.S. company, but certainly not with Chinese domination in terms of how they make decisions about how they operate their U.S. Uh, subsidiary. But they never address the issue uh, mm -hmm. that, the chi that is the law of the land in China, and they're a Chinese company that the Chinese government can demand information from them, which they could then take off the U.S. servers yeah. and send to them. They never that really the, addressed that. Was, that that yeah. was the most convincing sort of like theoretical example, right? Like you have a, you essentially have a, a government official either in the U.S. or China, and somehow um, the Chinese government takes their TikTok data and uses it against them to bend them to its will. Yeah. Right? And yeah. you could we you know, saw the, we see those unsaved drafts of the WAP dance that you've done. We're going to use <laughs> that against you. We're going to publish that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and we know that in the United States thanks to the Patriot Act and FISA courts and national security letters, we have similar rules. If I were Chinese, for instance, if I were the Chinese government, I would I could see why they would say, well, we don't want any of our citizens using Facebook. That's not, by the way, the reason they, they don't want the citizens using Facebook, because the reason they don't want f people using Facebook in China is because they might learn about the Uyghurs uh, internment camps, uh -huh. or they might learn about Tiananmen Square, or just hear about it. They might think President Xi looks like Winnie the Pooh, and that would be the end of the world. So that's the real reason. And actually, it may be the, the only real reason to ban TikTok. Uh, on my iPhone, TikTok doesn't get a lot of my personal information. I don't post pic videos. I just watch videos. Uh, the real threat of TikTok might be the propaganda threat more than anything else. Sure. For Actually, sure. it might yep. be for Donald Trump the propaganda threat because TikTok is used by a lot of young people who are also playing all sorts of tricks on Donald Trump. Well, yeah, we already know. Trump. We already know that yeah, happened so in mad. Tulsa. It helped, it helped wreck his Tulsa rally. So yeah. maybe, you know, when you describe how chi why China doesn't want Facebook, maybe that's why Donald Trump doesn't want TikTok. Well, I'm sure it is, <laughs> actually, yeah, come definitely. to think of it. <laughs> and uh, Leo, I'm glad you brought up the, the China and the Uyghur Muslim, like, situation, that whole deal. I feel like that's something we should be pressing American companies on harder 
when they decide to collaborate with the Chinese government and work in China and offer their products in China too. That to me seems like a more useful way of us questioning a lot of this, of what's happening in China. Well, and that's another uh, issue with Facebook as well. Yeah. Facebook has consistently benefited uh, dictators in number in Myanmar and other countries. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Here's a journal, I'm uh, sorry, Washington Post article from uh, 2018, Why Dictators Love Facebook. Uh, and, and this is, you know, this is the problem with Facebook uh, and any social network. They, they can weaponize information in ways that we have never seen before. You know, mm -hmm. somebody asked me, well, isn't this, how, how is this any different from William Randolph Hearst creating the Spanish-American War uh, in, what was it, 19... 8, 1915, uh, and he did. You know, he lobbied for war. He, he actually made the war happen. Um, and so in a way, this is like that, except he's even more powerful. <laughs> yeah, and everything happens very quickly. Like one post can can be a war declaration. It wouldn't just be several articles or, or a big push. Um, Leo, when we started talking about this, you said you didn't, you, you didn't want to leave this in a place where we didn't know, we don't have any answers. We kind of don't know what to say. I do. I think we can start to think about what we want from our social networks moving forward. Facebook did announce an oversight board, which unfortunately yeah. will not actually be up and running until after the election. Thanks a lot, guys. Um, but there is certainly more we can start pushing for these companies. Like I, I wish Facebook was run more like maybe like an actual newspaper or even like, you know, with people who are de who are used to dealing with facts and information, freaking librarians. Like Facebook needs to be someplace that's actually managed by people who understand the importance of information and the flow of accurate information. And well, I should I should point out historians do not agree that the, yeah. the, the press war between Hearst and Pulitzer in the 1890s created the Spanish-American War. Uh, the remember, certainly remember the main... And and that slogan uh, created a lot of war uh, hysteria. But uh, Joseph Campbell, uh, professor of communication at American University, the great Joseph Campbell, said no serious historian of the Spanish-American War period embraces the notion that they fomented or brought on the war in 1899. But, but at least William Randolph got us Hearst Castle. I mean, I've walked by Mark Zuckerberg's house. <laughs> It'll never be a state park. Hey, wait till you go to Hawaii and see the uh, Zuckerberg plantation yeah. in Kauai that you can't approach <clears throat> that yeah. you can't get anywhere near I imagine it rivals Hearst Castle in its size and and, and opulence Maybe that'll be a Hawaii State Park someday yeah it's a lot more like but a Xanadu if you ask me <laughs> but that is the big difference right like Larry when you were talking about the the sort of your filter bubble being um the women's march and, and Black Lives Matter and some of this stuff and then the filter bubbles that we're talking about when it comes to QAnon and and right. you know uh, vaccine hesitant groups or vaccine resistant groups and and this stuff to me the real difference there and and what Devendra is talking about too like the real difference there is facts right, right. like right. the the yes. you know you can you can be whatever you can argue politics all you want but there is not a, a an elite conspiracy to steal and eat babies that is run out of a pizza shop. <laughs> that is a fact. Okay. Like that's not, you don't, we don't need to argue about that. Right. That's BS. And if I believe that were true, I would be, as a, I would be up in arms. If I honestly believe the Democrats were eating babies, yes. I would be up yes. in arms, but it happens to not be true. 